Okay, guys. So let's start over chapter three. Uh, I have divided chapter three into three parts. It's a very long chapter, so that's why I have divided this chapter into three parts. Uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about the first part of chapter number three. Uh, we have uh, and this chapter is about malware and security attacks. So we have four main agenda items in this chapter, starting with activities that can cause security breaches, and this is the main topic that we we're gonna discuss today. Uh, other than that, we will also discuss types of security threats and mainly there are three main types of security threats that we we will we will be talk about uh firstly we will be discussing the password attacks uh in the security threats then we will be uh discussing some social engineering threats or attacks in fact and we will also discuss malware and we will discuss the different types of malware as well in in the second agenda item and the third agenda item, uh, which is about types of security attacks, we have two types of attacks to discuss. We will be discussing the wireless network attacks, and we will also discuss the uh, web application attacks, like cross-site scripting, XML injection, session hijacking, and stuff. Um, sorry, the uh, uh, SQL injection and all. So that's basically what we're going to discuss in the web web application attacks. Uh, at the last, we will we will be discussing some solutions, recommendations, or countermeasures for avoidance of all those attacks. So, uh, in this video, uh, we will be mainly focus on activities that can cause security breaches. So, before we directly discuss the activities which can cause security breaches, we really need to discuss what is a security breach, and uh, what are the different malicious activities going on, and who are the main key uh, key players or key characters. So, these cyber attacks are these cyber attacks are very common nowadays. So these cyber attacks, uh, these are very common nowadays. Nothing is 100% secure. Like nobody can claim that his or her system is absolutely secure. So cyber attacks are very common nowadays. And the main reason is script kiddies. Script kiddies, or you can say juvenile hackers, they are the main reasons. And the reason, I mean, because these uh, script kiddies, they, they, they know how to use the tools. They know how to use the tools, even though they don't know how to write a script, but they can use the script written by someone else. So they use the tool and try to hack, try to test the system sometime without knowing the consequences. So because of the script kiddies, we are surrounded by script kiddies. In fact, these cyber attacks are becoming very common nowadays. Uh, back in 2016, in 2016 elections, authorities, they sent a, a college student, a college student, to prison for 20 years. So a college student he sent to uh, prison for 20 years for hacking US vice presidential candidates email ad, email account. So he hacked the US vice presidential candidates email address. Okay? So there are many many examples like that but uh, most of the hackers or you can say most of the victims they don't publicize these hacks at all. So most of the victims they don't publicize it. They don't publicize these incident at all because of the stock market reputation and all that stuff uh, in 2013 bloomsburg so in 2013 bloomsburg they bloomsburg they identified the top hacking countries like from where the hacking is coming from so according to them 41 percent hacking is coming from china like 41% of the hacking uh, back in 2013, of course, uh, coming from China. So China was ranked as at first in hacking. Then US was at the second position with 10% of the hacking. Then we have Turkey 4.7% on the list. Uh, Russia was on fourth on the list and the list goes on. I mean, there are plenty of things, but the most important thing to note down here, it doesn't mean that we have more black attackers from China, US and other. It's not like that. It means like they might have more proxy servers because whenever you try to detect this, uh, detect or backtrack a hacker. So most of the hacker, they use proxy servers to put a mask over their IP address. So what is a proxy server? Proxy server is basically a computer that sits between attacker. So let's say this is attacker and a victim. So it sits between attacker and victim. What does it mean? Attacker will log into a computer which might be located in some other country. Let's say 
uh, the victim or the target is in United State. Attacker is let's say also in United States. Attacker will log into a computer which might have bad diplomatic relationship with US. So let's say North Korea. So attacker will find a proxy server located in North Korea and uh, then use this computer to hack or to, to launch attacks and all that stuff to US computer. If they want to backtrack it, they will find the IP address of the North Korea. This is called the proxy servers, okay? But the hackers, they use proxy chaining. Instead of one proxy server, they use plenty of other. There are many tools like you might heard of Tor, Proxifier. There are many, many tools like that, okay? Uh, what exactly we are trying to protect from malicious attacks. So these are the five main items that we are trying to protect. Firstly, customer data. Customer data means the consumer, customer, personal, identifiable information. Personal identifiable info. And what is personal identifiable information? Their name, social security number, their phone, their address, etc., etc. So their contact information, that's basically what we are trying to protect. Then IT infrastructure, we are trying to avoid the unauthorized access to uh, hardware and software. Then financial data, which is basically our clients um credit card number their debit card number etc account details and all service availability uh the main idea is to continuous support or continuous service or access of resources to legitimate users Reputation, brand image, and market reputation. This is what we are also trying to protect market reputation. And how we can protect our brand image and market reputation by avoiding security breaches. Security breaches. Okay. So uh, what we have discussed, we have discussed what we exactly try to protect. And these are the, I mean, the, uh, the problems, uh, the typical issues, like the script kiddies, in fact, the mostly. So let's move to our first agenda item now, uh, activities which can cause security breaches. Now, the first thing is, what is the definition of a security breach? If you remember uh, the first chapter, uh, we, we discussed any system can be declared as secure if it protects or ensure the security of CIA. So any event any event that results in violation violation of cia or you can say any event through which or that results in uh, through which cia gets compromised okay so any event that result in uh, violation of cia or through which cia can get compromised is called a security breach now these security breaches can be accidental sometimes can be accidental uh, which could be lack of user awareness we will talk about it how we can handle that or it could be intentional Intentional mean on purpose, like on purpose, like deliberately attackers, they, uh, they create a breach. They open back doors and stuff like that to hack a system and all. Now let's, let's talk about the security breaches. And there are five main, there are five main activities, five activities, uh, which cause security breaches. And if a security breach occur, it means, of course, any of the parameter get compromised. Any of the parameter of CIA is getting compromised. That's basically what security breach is. So please remember, security breach is nothing. If any of the parameter of confidentiality, integrity, or availability, any of the parameter gets compromised, it means that it's a security breach. 
So the first attack is uh, the DOS attack. DOS stands for denial of service. Now denial of service attack is basically, it's this is the attack on availability. So it is attack on availability. So uh, just to give just to give you a basic overview, what is a DOS attack? In DOS attack, let's say for example, this is our website, and our website is running on a web server. Let's say website is ggc.edu, and we are running this website on this server. Now, in the case, of, let's say let's assume it. So since it is a server, so it can handle five thousand queries per second. It means if five thousand people they try to access our uh, if, if, if 5,000 queries, uh, 5,000 people, in fact, they try to access this web server, they will find the web servers on, it is up. But for example, if anybody, let's say we have an attacker, hacker. So let's say there is a hacker who is pushing 6,000 queries to, to our server. Now what will happen? Our server will freeze. Like we might have to like, uh, it, it might actually, uh, it, it might be unavailable for legitimate people because it might be overwhelmed by somebody who's pushing 6,000 queries. Now, how we can avoid, that's called a DOS attack. How we can avoid it, we can actually use a firewall and we can detect that the person who is basically pushing too much data, we can put his name or IP address in the blacklist. We can do that. But we'll talk about it, how hackers, they, they manipulate with that. So DOS attack is basically attack on availability and the definition of DOS attack is in DOS attack, DOS attack, the attacker, attackers overwhelm, overwhelm the victims system with excessive queries, excessive or you can say unnecessary queries with excessive queries to prevent to prevent the legitimate to prevent the legitimate users from gaining access. Okay. So now what will happen? Uh, like again, the thing is this server can handle 5,000 queries per second. And if you have started, if somebody start pushing 6,000 queries per second, what will happen? The server will get overwhelmed. Okay. So there are mainly two types of DOS attack. Uh, one is the logic DOS attack and second is the flooding. So logic DOS attack is basically where attacker, they find a software flaw, a glitch in a software, and then they exploit it to hinder the performance or crash the system. Okay. It's, it's kind of a very technical kind of attack. Like you need to find, identify a problem and then exploit that particular problem to over and over to crash the system. Again, to, uh, to launch a logic DOS attack, attacker has to write a script based on the vulnerability. Then we have the flooding. As already discussed, it's uh, nothing is just the overwhelming a system, a victim system, overwhelming system to make it unavailable for legitimate for the legitimate users. So that is called basically flooding attack. Now, flooding attack can be further classified into two types. There are further classification of flooding attack. One is called sin flood and second is called smurf. So the sin flood is basically uh, its extension of the DOS attack, which is called DDoS attack. It's one of the type of DDoS attack. Uh, I will I will discuss the sin flood and then I'll come to the DDoS attack. DDoS attack is basically like if you launch DOS attack from multiple nodes, like from here, if you see down here, uh, we have like in the DOS attack, for example, we have just one attacker, one attacker computer, and he's pushing 6,000 requests per second to overwhelm this computer, which can handle 5,000 queries per second. So just imagine how we can avoid it. We can avoid it if we use a firewall and put this IP address, let's say uh, the attacker's IP address in blacklist, or let's say put a cap here, like one one computer can send only one. So device. in DDoS attack, what, what's going to happen? So attacker can can arrange 6,000 computers. Attacker can make, you know, a, a zombie computer, botnet of 6,000 computers and send one, you know, ping packet or one particular, you know, uh, the request from each particular computer. 
So rather than sending out 6,000 requests from one computer, attacker might arrange 6,000 computer and all uh, try to overwhelm that particular website by sending out 6,000 requests from all 6,000 different computers. This is called DOS attack. So if DOS attack is launched from multiple nodes, that is called DDoS attack. And this is uh, the sin flood, in fact. We will be discussing that. So flooding attack can be further categorized into two types, sin flood and smurf. So let's talk about uh, sin flood first. So to understand the sin flood, Sin flood, we need to understand the sin protocol because sin flood is basically uh, attacker exploit the vulnerability of sin flood, uh, sin protocol. So sin protocol attacker, attacker mainly exploit, mainly exploits the vulnerability of sin protocol now what is basically a sin protocol if you remember uh, in the last chapter uh, the networking chapter we discussed uh, the tcp packet so tcp packets are basically connection oriented so tcp protocol is basically a connection oriented protocol so tcp is basically a connection oriented connection oriented mean uh, before sending any packet, uh, the sender makes a connection with the receiver and then it, uh, a bi-direction communication flows. So in, for in the TCP protocol, they, uh, to make a connection, so they actually use or systems use mainly SYN protocol. Okay, three-way handshaking SYN protocol. What is that? In SYN protocol, what happens? Let's say this is your computer. And for example, you want to access this website, ggc.edu. So before uh, before we, we 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 create a TCP packet before we start communication, firstly your computer will send a small pilot signal, and that signal is called SYN request. So just request mean uh, just to check, hey, are you up? If this website or this web server is up, the web server will respond you back with SYN acknowledgement, like hey, yes, I am up. After receiving the acknowledgement, now this particular server will wait for you. They will open a channel for you and start waiting for your acknowledgement, like whether you are on uh, up or not. So what will happen after receiving this thin acknowledgement? The last is your computer will respond with acknowledgement just to let him know, hey, I am up. And after uh, GTC web server or the receiver, it receives your acknowledgement, then a bi-directional communication will be started like a TCP packet will be forwarded and you can get the, the stuff. So these three way handshaking is called SYN protocol. How attackers, they abuse it. In order to launch a SYN flood, what attacker will do? Attacker will create a botnet. What is a botnet? Bot botnet is basically a network of zombies. And what is a zombie? Zombie is basically a computer controlled by hacker. Computer controlled by hacker, computer overtaken by hacker is called a zombie computer. Zombie computer could be anyone's computer, like it could be your computer might be, having weak security, weak firewall and stuff like that. Hackers, in order to create a zombie, in order to create a botnet, in fact, what hackers they do, they create worms. Sometimes what they do, they, they craft a website, like it could be any blogging site or something like that. Whenever anybody visit the website, they can, uh, unauthorizedly they can scan your computer find if there is any you know vulnerability you have a weak firewall so what will happen they will take control of your computer remotely they can take control of your computer to turn your computer into a zombie computer so network of computer network of zombie is called botnet or you can say network of computers controlled by hacker is called a botnet in order to launch a sin flood what hackers do they firstly create a botnet Okay, botnet means now they have plenty of computers. So let's say this is hacker, uh, the botnet, and hacker has plenty of computers in his control. And that's basically hacker. The hacker can remotely control all these computers. So this is the hacker's botnet. After that, let's say this is my a website, which, uh, which I want to overwhelm. So ggc.edu, for example. So what hacker will do? Hacker will initiate the SYN protocol, send, a SYN request to send a SYN request to gcc.edu. Now what will happen? Hacker will use all these computers and all these computers will simultaneously send a SYN request 
Now what will happen? They will, gcc.edu will open channel for all of these computers. This, it might be, let's say 1 million computers. For example, I'm just giving a hypothetical example. Let's say hacker has 1 million computers in his botnet. So all these 1 million computers, they will initiate the SYN protocol altogether. When server will receive it, server will open, you know, a channel and start responding them back with SYN acknowledgement like, hey, yes, I am up. But what will happen? The botnet will not respond it back with acknowledgement, which server is looking for. Server is waiting for their acknowledgement. What will happen? Hacker, they might actually change the IP address like hacker might use ghost IP addresses. Like next time, same computer, but with different IP address, which doesn't exist. So what will happen again? Hacker will initiate a new uh, SYN protocol again, send a SYN request. Server will receive it again. Server is already waiting for their acknowledgement, but server will open new channel for the new request because those requests might came from different IP address and hacker did it by using IP spoofing, like using some ghost IP addresses, which don't exist. So ha hacker will repeat this process over and over unless the web server will run out of resources, out of resources, like hacker will keep it, keep engaging this web server uh, through the botnet, like keep doing it, keep working it. This attack is called SYN flood, where hacker uh, didn't complete the SYN protocol, like just send a message. Once it received the message, then it send again the SYN request. Again, when it respond you back again, the botnet will send a SYN request with different set of IP addresses. So each time hacker will do the ghost spoofing, like change the IP addresses and keep the system busy. Uh, next is the smurf attack smurf attack so smurf dos attack is basically uh, it's also called impersonation 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 attack what attacker does so let me just make you understand first for example uh, this is your victim and victim's ip address is 1.1.1.1 let's say this is your attacker Attacker and victim has to be connected with the same network. So we are connected with the same network. Let's say this is the router, for example, or your switch. Plenty of other devices are also connected. Like this is device, that's a device. All these devices are connected with the same local area network. You're also connected. Now that's basically your victim. Now what attacker will do? Attacker will impersonate as 1.1.1.1. Like attacker will do IP spoofing. Okay. And after doing IP spoofing, what attacker will do? Attacker will broadcast a ping packet. But I mean, attacker pretends that I am 1.1.1 and broadcast a ping packet, send the ping packet to everybody on the network. Once all these computers, they will receive the ping packet. What will happen? They will think this request came from 1.1 and they will start responding back to, I mean, all the computer will start responding back to 1.1. Who didn't initiate uh, the ping packet? Who didn't ask for it? So attacker will repeat the process over and over unless this computer gets overwhelmed. This is called Smurf attack. So in Smurf attack, attacker, firstly, joins the victim's network, victim's local area network, and then does IP spoofing like impersonation impersonation IP spoofing crafts and next it will crafts ping packet and broadcast over the network over the local area network. So what happens? Attacker joins the local area network, does the IP spoofing, impersonation, pretend to be, you know, the victim. So pretend to be like he's a victim, crafts a pin packet, broadcast over the local area network. So all the devices over local area network will then start responding or sending data or response to the victim. 
Okay, so this attack will be repeated over and over unless the victim's computer will get overwhelmed. That is called smurf attack or impersonation attack. Again, this is a DOS attack. Uh, next is the DDoS attack. As we already talked about, DDoS attack is use of botnet to launch DOS attack. Denial of service is called DDoS attack or you can say uh, if when DOS attack is launched through multiple nodes. It is called DDoS attack, distributed denial of service attack. Like uh, the same example, it can handle 5,000 queries per second. Now attacker has created a botnet of 6,000 computer and sending request. I mean, one request from one computer and repeating it over and over. That is DDoS attack. Uh, the next this the third uh, activity which can cause security breach is called unacceptable web browsing. Unacceptable web browsing can also cause security breaches. For example, it could be violation of organization acceptable use policy. Like you are basically doing what you are not supposed to do in fact. Uh, secondly, visiting prohibited websites in the work area. Number three is accessing files which you are not authorized to access. Okay. These are these can also cause uh, security breaches because if you visit some prohibited website, sometimes it happens like uh, uh, hackers, they they are they might they might upload or they might craft some uh, cross uh, some script over the website like the bad website sometime and you might get the worm or the virus and it can be spreaded over the network next is the wire tapping uh, hackers they can also tap the hackers or attackers hackers can also tap the telephone lines telephone lines are your data communication lines so they can tap your telecommunication line your uh, data communication line can also be tapped uh, there are two types of wire tapping one is called passive wire tapping and second is called active wire tapping passive wire tapping is basically where hacker is just sniffing like intercepting whatever you're doing they are just making uh, you know making a log just sniffing it there are plenty of tools which can be used one is called wireshark Another tool is DSNF. We will be using Wireshark in our uh, in our lab three. Active wire tapping can be further classified into two types. One is called between the lines, and second is piggyback. So between the line means like uh, we're attacker. Let's say you are bit further between the line. So this is basically sender, and let's say that is receiver. And now this is basically your. Uh, attacker or man in the middle wire tapping so now in active what is happening in, in passive what is happening whatever you're transmitting it is dipping like he's basically making a log in active wire tapping what happens especially in the between the line you are sending a message hello attacker will intercept it and now because it will go through from attacker now so attacker let's say you're sending hello attacker is adding let's say hello and bye like attacker add some additional information with that so, but doesn't tamper the the original content. So attacker adds additional info with the data and does not tamper original content. So original data will be uh, remains intact, but uh, uh, it adds the new additional information again attack on integrity. Piggybacking what happened attacker intercept again and completely modify the data you are sending hello attacker is making let's say hell. So completely modifies data that is piggyback entry. 
the last type of uh, activity which can cause security breach that is called backdoors backdoors are basically like uh, most of the time backdoors they actually came through um, trojans trojans will discuss in detail like for example you just visit a website or let's say uh, you just got an email from your friend with a pdf okay so uh, you you have asked to download the pdf and read the terms and conditions stuff like that so once you download that pdf i mean you are seeing a pdf you are reading out a pdf and it's supposed to be a pdf but there might be a hidden uh, you can say a malware which is doing some bad stuff like in front of you it's a pdf file but on the back end something going something bad is uh, opening like it might open bad uh, uh, the ports in your computer to let the bad traffic in turn off your antiviruses stuff like that these are called backdoor or for example let's say you have installed an application on your cell phone okay and you're just playing a game on the back end what it is doing it is basically tracking your location without letting you know or it is basically copying the data from your computer or your cell phone so that is backdoors so backdoors are basically uh, simply you can say software that includes hidden access methods okay so backdoors what they do they uh, they open usually they open ports open unauthorized port uh, turn off firewall fw firewall and antiviruses to let the bad traffic in so that's basically what the backdoors do for example if you use whatsapp so if you guys use whatsapp what happens uh whatsapp the wipe voice over ip application so let's say on the whatsapp for the first time if you want to share your picture so they ask you do you allow whatsapp to access your uh, access your uh, phone uh, the the photo photo collection or the photo folder do you allow them so if you hit yes now what happens you are basically giving permission to whatsapp to access your pictures and all that stuff okay just imagine whatsapp is a very good app like if it would be a bad app so what happens if you install the app put the app on your phone so they can access whatever is stored on your systems uh then the the last few things some additional security challenges spam is basically unwanted emails and mostly these are the they provide carriers to uh to malware spam unwanted instant messages hawks uh it's kind of a con it's it's a con like uh it's basically act uh to deceive or you can say to act to trick the users sometimes it's it's like kind of you know the um, social engineering kind of attack attackers they create a con just to get confidential information of the people uh the last is uh, of course it's a biggest threat to privacy which is called uh, uh like i mean uh, by creating cookies you are permitting a website uh to to store something on your computer so what what does it mean cookies are basically let's say uh, i believe everybody already heard of cookies so when you allow the cookie to a website let's say this is a website you visit a website let's say hotmail.com so for the first time or let's say if you just enter your username and password okay after successful authentication what happens you might see a pop up message do you want to remember username and password when you hit yes you are permitting hotmail to store a text file on your computer with the username and password so what will happen next time when you visit this website you don't have to put username and password when you visit the website hotmail get into your hard drive and access username and password so what does it mean it it means you are allowing somebody to access your hard drive there might be some other websites cookie as well let's say yahoo.com amazon.com you might have those cookies as well so that's a problem again uh, we will discuss that in detail but uh, websites or advertisement software sometimes running on the website they can pull your cookies they can you know pull your uh, web browser histories and all that so cookies are basically cookies are small text files which contain user 
preferences and user specific data for example user uh, your username password credit card number your address etc etc okay so these kind of information can be stored in cookies uh, web browsers like Google Chrome and Safari and all that browsers allow websites to store cookie on users hard drive again there are plenty of type of cookie we will discuss that in our web application uh, web network attacks uh, we'll discuss session cookies persistent cookie and all that I'm talking about persistent cookie uh, where we have username and password so uh, that's it about the part one. So what we have mainly discussed in this part, we mainly have discussed the activities which can cause security breaches. Specifically, we'll discuss five types of security breaches or the five types of um, the activities. Firstly, we'll discuss DOS, types of DOS attack, DDoS attack, unacceptable web browsing, wiretapping, and the backdoors. We will continue our discussion and in the next class, we will be uh, discussing the types of security threats, these three threats and types of security attacks will be discussed later on. Okay. Thank you.